It's now time for Mark Hankins, Faith for Every Nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. Interesting, now a little bit yes. more here. He says, to respect a man is the first restoration of the self-respect he has lost. Our ideal of what he is becomes to him the hope and pattern of what he may become. Wow. That's interesting, isn't it? It's so uh, godly. It's very godly. It's, it's the, the God, God kind us. of love. It's the way God loves us. Good. So God surrounds us with this love, mm -hmm. believing the best about us. And when we believe the best about others, he said it actually is the great secret of personal influence, and it actually will cause people to rise higher mm -hmm. because they know that we believe the best it's about It's a trusting them. atmosphere. Very interesting, isn't it? You know, um, I remember you said that John Osteen uh, told the Lord, he said, um, Lord, I wish I could have been in some of your healing meetings and heard Jesus teach about, you know, healing. Yeah. And he said, it's right there in Matthew 5, you know, where it says, love each other, love forgive your one, love your enemies. Bless you know, those who curse. curse you. So it's talking a lot about our personal relationships and how to forgive. Yeah how to believe the best. Yeah. And that's a, that's what the love of God does there. It's just yeah. amazing. If we believe how much God believes in us, hmm. we believe his love toward us. We have faith in the love of God. So faith in the love of God. That he loves us. We relax. And he says, we will actually Not rise yes. higher in our behavior through the God kind of love, simply meaning that uh, the law, the Old Testament basically s says the worst about you mm -hmm. and you break this and you break that and you break something else mm -hmm. and that's really exposes human nature. Mm -hmm. But the God kind of love is the divine nature. Mm -hmm. It is what happens when you get saved or make Jesus your Lord is God puts a new heart and a new nature in mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. And then he surrounds us and gives us revelation of his love for us. And Jesus said, now, I want you to love one another. It's amazing another. because, you know, God loves us first. Mm. Then we respond to that love. We love him. Yeah. But not only do we love him, we start looking around and loving each other. Interesting. And that yeah. is the heart of God. And John says something also, too, very interesting that he says that perfect love yes. cast out all fear. He said, fear has torment, has but torment. when someone is perfected in the God kind mm -hmm. of love, well, that means you can be perfected in the God kind of love, which simply means you get further light, further revelation of it. You practice it more. You grow in it. Mm -hmm. Number one, God's love for you, and then that love for others, the way God has loved you, it's his divine nature. And so you grow in the God kind of love. And, and 1 Corinthians 13, we got to get there just a second here because 1 Corinthians 13 gives us the breakdown of the God kind of love, how he loves us. And it is the number one uh, cha produce, change producing element yes. in Christianity yes. is the love of Christ. Yes. Well, you read all these different uh, nine yeah. characteristics of the love of God. And uh, Henry Drummond, uh, he used the example of a prism, which has all kinds of When the light comes through different when the light comes through colors and different it comes shades. through different colors. It's so, so he says the love of God's one, one thing. It's like the light comes through that prism, but it breaks out into nine different things. Mm -hmm. And you can find those here in 1 Corinthians 13. All right, go to 1 Corinthians 13 real quickly here. So this is really the last one we're talking about is the Apostle Paul. This was not Paul's 
strongest subject. Because <laughs> he came from being a self-righteous oh, Pharisee yeah. and he was meaner than a snake. You know, religion can be really mean. Yeah. Well, it can be really right. I know everything. I'm well, the answer person. Yeah. Just, call, just ask me, I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, religion can be so mean. And, uh, you know, you can get beat up in church just as bad as you can get beat oh. up in the wrong neighborhood. <laughs> so, so Reminds but, me of uh, Aunt Oster, Esther. Aunt Esther. Aunt Esther, yeah. <laughs> See, with, with Sanford and Son. Sanford. You know, yeah, yeah, she beat him with her she Bible. <laughs> She's beating Sanford. <laughs> well, well, I love that show. But... Um, the, the, the funny thing about uh, religion yeah. is it's determined to be right. And it's amazing how many different denominations claim they're the ones that are right. <laughs> All right? And so you got, well, we're right, they're right, they're right. Everybody's determined to be right. And they no, want to no, point I'm out right. and they want to <laughs> point out where everybody else is wrong yeah. and we are right. Yeah. So what he's saying, here's the way the, uh, the Lord said it to me one time. He said, you can be right and still be wrong. Mm, Here's okay. what he said. He said, God's love is right. Mm -hmm. That would be the higher right mm -hmm. of what's right. Mm -hmm. All right? So when you choose to walk in love, regardless of what other people do, you have just chosen the royal law, mm -hmm. the highest law in the kingdom of God, is that is, I'm going to walk in the God kind of love, and that is right. That would be walking in your righteousness. That would be walking in mercy. Which is a free gift. Yeah. It's not earned. Yeah. Yeah. So look at 1 Corinthians 13. Self-righteousness will beat you. Ah, boy, it'll beat you. <laughs> beat the dog out of me. That's why I always say, you know, I wrote a song, you know, Jesus loved the hell out of me. <laughs> I said, Jesus loved the hell. And, and Stan Pody actually wrote it into a yeah. song. Jesus loved the hell out of me. Now, I never heard anybody else say that, but I started saying it many years ago. So then I heard somebody else writing a song about it. I don't know where they got it, but I got it just from the Lord. Jesus loved the hell out of me <laughs> because I went to church and they tried tried to, uh, <laughs> what would you say? They went to church and tried to preach, preach the hell the out of hell. me. Yeah. So they were trying to preach the hell out of me. <laughs> I went to school, they tried to educate the hell out of me. Oh, I got put in jail, they tried to rehabilitate the hell out of me. I went home, my daddy tried to beat the hell out of me. <laughs> <laughs> but, but when I got a revelation of the love of Christ, in other words, I knew all the sermons, but when I personally saw the love of Christ mm -hmm. for me, he loved the hell out of You know what? I just feel like the Holy Spirit is saying something here that some of you, maybe you're listening and you say, man, my life is hell. It's just such torment. Yeah. It's just horrible. It's just like there's no end to it. That's hell. But Jesus is showing you that mm -hmm. there is a way out. And yeah. he loves you with an everlasting love. And he's provided a way of escape out of hell. Yeah. And you can escape even your own uh, hell, you know, torment. the torment yep. that you have towards yourself. And like, towards others. And towards others who have hurt you. And this is the answer. It's the love of God. It's the love of Christ. And so when Brother Osteen said, Lord, I would love to heard one of your healing sermons. He's telling Jesus. He said, because it said everybody got healed, no matter how sick they were, how long they were sick, no matter what the problem was. It says, and Jesus healed them all. He healed them all. So Brother Osteen said, Lord, this is John Osteen, uh, Joel's dad, but uh, years ago he said, Lord, I would love to have heard one of your healing sermons. And Jesus said to him, it's right there in Matthew chapter 5. Love your enemies. Mm -hmm. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who despitefully mm -hmm. use you. In other words, there's something about the love of God that instead of fighting and hating, if you'll walk in that love, there's healing in that love. But you may say, I don't see how I can do that. Just receive the love of God. Yeah. Receive the love believe he has for you and you. believe yeah. in that. Yeah. And that's the love that we love other people with. And so 1 John 4, 16 says, we have known mm -hmm. and believed the love that God has for us. It says that God is love. He that dwells in love dwells in God, mm -hmm. and God dwells in him. So number one, you have revelation about the love of God. 
you know about it and you have faith and you believe in that love, that love for you, but you also believe that it's God's way, it's the best way, it's the way to win, it's the way to victory, mm -hmm. it's the way to turn people's lives around, it's to pray for, love, bless. The scripture says about Job, it says the Lord turned Job's captivity mm -hmm. when he prayed for his friends. Mm -hmm. But if you'll study that, his friends were the people that were criticizing they him. Were criticizing and him. so I've had a lot of, Dad Hayden said, I've had a lot of critics in my time. He said, I just kept preaching the, the, the word. But we all have different people that criticize us. So I've had a lot of people that criticize us. So how in the world are you to deal with that? Well, you're supposed to pray for them. So you put them on the list. You're not praying God to kill them, of course. But you're, you're, <laughs> you're, actually, you're praying for them for God to bless them. That's right. So he says, you never, First Peter said, never return evil for evil or insult for insult. Mm -hmm. He said, instead, blessing. Blessing, he said, and you will inherit a blessing. Mm -hmm. So when you bless those that are cursing you, pray for those. He said, you will actually inherit a blessing. Yeah. And you're activating a royal law of mercy. And he said, and when you do that, mercy rejoices yeah. over, or mercy wins. Mm -hmm. And so it'll win in your life, it'll win in other people's lives mm -hmm. when you are merciful. Merciful, and you forgive. You're giving Yeah. the love of God when you forgive. Yeah. And uh, that's the greatest thing we can do. And when we forgive, mm -hmm. then you put it, you yeah. get it out of your hands, and you put it in God's hands, yeah. and that's when God can do a miracle and turn the whole situation yeah. around. As yeah. long as we're holding on to unforgiveness, man, we got a, we got condemnation coming on ourselves. Yeah, that's not ours to judge, but we put it in God's hands. To get, say, God, yeah. I forgive him. I want you to forgive them. Once you do that, miracles begin to happen, and God can turn it around. Well, God's ability. He's the judge. What God's able to do, he can reach and deal with things yes. you could not deal with. So when you walk in love, God will fight your battle for you. So if you'll determine, I'm going to walk in love, no matter what anybody else does. No matter. And you believe God will deal with a situation. Yeah. And God is able and God has the ability. He, he has a network. He can deal with those situations. And you can cast all your cares on him because you know he cares for you. Mm -hmm. He loves you. And when you forgive others and you let it go, you say, I'm not going to keep thinking about that. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to keep condemning others. I'm going to have mercy. Mm -hmm. I'm going to forgive them. And I can cast the care of that on the Lord because I know he cares for me. Amen. He cares for me. And so when you do that, you're free. Mm -hmm. You are free and you can enjoy life. I, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy. So the very next fruit of the Spirit after love is joy. Joy. You get you your get joy happy. back. You get happy. Yeah. You say, I'm not in charge of everybody. I'm not in charge of the universe. It's not my job to fix and it's not my job to correct everybody. Yeah. Come on. It's not my job to criticize everybody. It's not job to sh not my job to show where I'm right and everybody else is wrong. <laughs> it's my job to walk in the walk God in kind love. of love. You know, uh, your mom taught me a lot of th practical things about mm. walking in love. She must have seen that I needed it. <laughs> but as a young mom. Oh, she might have seen that you were going to be <laughs> married to me. <laughs> and you would definitely. Know. I would need to know how to forget. <laughs> but she, she told me the story about, I remember we were sitting in the car and she told me the story about how uh, when you were just a baby, you got sick. You were sick and you had a fever. Mm -hmm. And they had tried everything. I had to... many trials and tribulations <laughs> as a young child. <laughs> he was sick, and and your mom was just so worried about you. But um, you know, they prayed, they did everything. It, no, nothing worked. And then she got quiet. You know, and the Lord started dealing with her. Mm. Sometimes God, if our prayers are not answered, sometimes there's a reason why there's something in the way. Yeah. And so she got quiet and she began to listen. The Holy Spirit said, you need to forgive. And she called your husband or her husband, BB, yeah, your dad. My dad. And so you need to forgive your husband. And she said, she got, she was so frustrated with him because he would sit in the chair and read the newspaper and throw the paper on the <laughs> That's what made her mad. And the, so there's Let piles of paper on the floor. Her, <laughs> your, his socks were everywhere. And she, you know, just had a lot of work to do as a mom. <laughs> and 
he wasn't helping and he was making mm -hmm. things worse. And she harbored that in her heart and she was angry at your dad. And she said at that moment, she, and they had fussed about it. She forgave him. She went to him and they prayed. Mm -hmm. She forgave they him. Forgave. She said, you, please forgive me. Yeah. And that's hard to do. Sometimes say, please forgive me. Yeah. She did it. And Dad Hagen said it this way, if you've never asked anyone to forgive you, if you've never told anyone, I'm sorry, you are not walking in the God kind of love. I'm sorry. You're not walking in the God kind of love unless you have told someone, <laughs> Yeah. forgive me, I'm Thank sorry for the way I talked mm -hmm. or my behavior or something I didn't do or something that I did do. And so uh, to walk in the God kind you of love. You have to humble you must, yourself. Yeah, you humble yourself and say, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that or I shouldn't have spoken that way. And so you can actually grow mm -hmm. in the God and kind of love. And have your prayers answers because yeah. there, here they were, they, they needed agreement because you needed yeah. to be healed. Yeah, I heard But they came into agreement, and I got prayed healed. for you, and you were healed. When you stand, pray and forgive. Yeah. You have all against any. And so then you're, you're the mountain will move, and the, the prayer will be answered. So walking in the God kind of love is the number one thing with God, and it's the priority above all things. So we've gone through all, and now we're at the Apostle Paul, 1 Corinthians 13, where he says, love is the total fulfillment of the law. This is the new commandment Jesus gave us. And so he gives us a definition of it in 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. And I'm going to give it to you real quickly because our time is running out. We'll cover it again in another program. He says, love endures long. This is the amplified. So here's your characteristics. This is the kind of love that's in your heart. It's God's love nature. And it's in there, and you just have to renew your mind and practice, and you'll grow in it. So you just have to go over it regularly to renew your mind. Mm -hmm. um, in this area, people renew their mind in healing and prosperity scriptures all the time. Uh, this might be the number one thing you yeah. and I need to renew our mind in. So he says, love endures long and is patient and kind. Love never is envious nor boils over with jealousy. It is not boastful or vainglorious. It does not display itself haughtily. It is not conceited, arrogant, inflated with pride. It does not display itself haughtily. Uh, it's, it is not rude or unmannerly. It does not act unbecomingly. Love, God's love in us, God's love in us does not insist on its own rights or its own way, for it is not self-seeking. It is not touchy or fretful or resentful. It takes no account of the evil done to it, and it pays no attention to a suffered wrong. He says, it does not rejoice in injustice and unrighteousness, rejoices when right and truth prevail. Love bears up under anything and everything that comes. It is ever ready to believe the best of every person. Its hopes are fadeless under all circumstances. It endures everything without weakening. Love never fails. Never fails. Never fails. In other words, it cannot fail. It's the God kind of love. So it always wins. Mm -hmm. Our dad Hagen said it's the way to victory. Mm -hmm. Our in this book that our free book to you, it is the way to success. It is the secret to success. So I encourage you uh, to take uh, this book on love, the secret to success. We have first Corinthians 13, four through eight in about 10, 10 or 12 different translations. And take some time every day, not to just renew your mind in healing, not just renew your mind in prosperity, not just renew your mind in the areas that you want to, but take some time and renew your mind because this is the number one priority in the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And it is the way of God. It's, way it's God's God. way. Mm -hmm. And so you know about it. The more you know about it, number one, it's God's love for you. Mm -hmm. And Sometimes, then number two is the way he wants us to treat loves, others. Yeah, yeah, he loves us. Yeah. And he wants us to love others. Sometimes I meditate in that and I, where the word love is, I put I. I endure long yeah. and impatient mm -hmm. and kind. Yeah. So I'm identifying with the love of God that's yeah. in me. Like different translations we have in this book are very very uh, powerful. One, uh, Williams translation says, love never gets provoked. It does not harbor 
evil thoughts. And when he talks about that, Dad Hagen said, I don't even think that other people don't like me. That's powerful. In other words, he said, I refuse to entertain that somebody doesn't like me because that's that I'm not really walking in love. He said, actually, it's not my job to figure out whether they like me or not. It's my job to love them yeah. and not constantly think, oh, they hate me, they don't like me. No, he said, I don't think that way. He said, actually, the love of God's in my heart and I love them. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not going to accuse them of hating me. Mm -hmm. So he said, I don't think about that. Think no evil. And then he says, bears upon anything. It exercises faith in everything. It believes all things. So think about how your faith would function when the God kind of love yeah. believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. And so uh, it exercises faith in everything. And Weiss translation says, love is kind. It is gentle. It is benign, pervading and penetrating your whole nature. It mellows all that would be harsh and austere. It does not brag or show itself off. It does not have an inflated ego. It is not irritated, provoked, exasperated, and aroused to anger. I'm going to walk in love. <laughs> he said, when I walk in love, he said, that is the new law of the new covenant. Mm -hmm. He said, and when you walk in love, he said, then God said, I'll take sickness away from the midst of you. Because mm -hmm. the Old Testament, he said, you keep my commandment. Mm -hmm. And this is our, the new commandment mm -hmm. to walk in love. He said, I'll take sickness away from the midst of you. So Dad Hagen would say something like this. He said, I decided I'm going to walk in love with anybody else does or not. He said, and that's why I have not had a headache in 60 years. Wow. <laughs> he said, that's I decided, good walking in love. I've been around him when oh, people were my. criticizing some other preacher mm -hmm. and even talking about somebody that was his enemy. He never made a comment. He would say, bless his heart. He never bless fight. His heart. And so we want to walk in the God kind of love and we want to grow in it. And so we can all grow in it. And if you get out, if you fail or step out, then dad get back said, in. jump right back in, get the scriptures back out, make your confession. I'm going to walk in love. I'll not criticize others. So we encourage you to get this book, Love, The Secret to Success. This is my copy. So it's kind of all You might want to get some more and give them out. Yeah, well, <laughs> uh, good uh, gifts. if you already have one, number one, don't say, well, I already got that book. Well, then read it. Read it. <laughs> Take some time to read it and go over I had a friend, she said, oh, yeah, I read that book one time. I read that book one time. <laughs> Honey, you need Man, to get back into it. <laughs> you have to read it almost every day or uh, several times a week for the influence of that word to stay. Yeah. And uh, so he says, renew your mind. Renew your mind. You're watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. God not only commands us to love one another, but he has given us the love to do it with. God's love is in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Anytime you feel mistreated, you know the devil is working on you. Walking in the God kind of love is our greatest challenge, but also our greatest reward. Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 13, a description of the love of God. It is often called the definition of the God kind of love and explains the way God loves us. In Mark Hankins' book, Love the Secret to Success, he explains how the greatest quest in life should be walking in the God kind of love. This book also has many translations of 1 Corinthians 13 that will help you renew your mind to the love of God. You can't grow in God without growing in love. You will also receive the brand new CD set, The Royal Law, Understanding the Love of God. Pastor Mark teaches, as we practice speaking and responding with love, our faith will grow and we will walk in victory. Faith works by love. Your gift of any amount will help Mark and Jenna Hankins train believers worldwide. Our vision is for believers to catch the spirit of faith, learn who they are in Christ, and become strengthened by the move of the Holy Spirit. Your love seed will also help us complete our new Mark Hankins Ministries Conference Center. This conference center will help us distribute the word more effectively through conferences and serve as our new television studio. With your gift of any amount, you will receive the book, Love the Secret to Success, and the four CD set, The Royal Law, Understanding the Love of God. You can also download the MP3s of these messages in our app for free. Please call 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. 
Thank you, World Mission Partners. Together we can, together we will. You cannot grow in God without growing in love. Thank you so much for joining us for the program today. We trust that you were challenged, but you were also encouraged to walk in His love. My parents wanna get this message to you today because we know it is life changing. We wanna get this love, the secret to success, to you for your gift of any amount. All you have to do is call the number on the screen or you can visit markhankins.org. I'm Alicia Hankins Moran, have a great day. One interesting thing that I'd like to share is um, I traveled with Dad Hagen uh, from 86 to 93 and I was just tired of traveling. I was 20, 26 years old and I'm just like I'm tired of doing this and so I uh, I left and I knew I wasn't supposed to leave but I left and uh, uh, as what happens with most people that get out of the will of God you know you just you're lost again and um, just had no confidence before God and and I just got in a really bad place in my life as a result of that. And, um, and the consequences of that left me in a hospital room one day with uh, the doctors telling my family I'd be dead in two days. And uh, it miraculously, uh, you know, things got, things got better. Uh, but right after that, Pastor Mark caught wind of that. And uh, it was actually, 25 years ago this year, he, uh, he called and said, hey, why don't you uh, come sing at my camp meeting, come play. And I'm like, seriously? And he's like, yeah. So, so I came here and um, I realized now it wasn't for him, it was for me. And um, he was just there to build me up at that really dark time of my life. And I'll never forget that. And, you know, that's just the kind of person he is. That's the kind of people they are. They love hard and they, um, they want to see people where they need to be in the place they need to be doing the work of God. And so that was 25 years ago. And here we are 25 years later helping them. And um, God's good and uh, so thankful for them and their faithfulness to, to do what God's called them to do. We, uh, we're blessed because of that. Yeah. I know that not everybody is going to get to be this close, but what I love about them is that they make time to get to know people, yeah. to know them as well as time will allow. Yeah. It's a supernatural relationship. Absolutely. Every connection they're making and it's love, it's Jesus, it's to impart good. It's to impart something good to, to people. And we, we make much of that relationship. We're so grateful, yeah. so very grateful for our relationship, our partnership, our friendship. Um, we just, we love them, we treasure them. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org. You can access many free word resources to help you find who you are in Christ. Stay connected with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.